In this and the following lectures, we study sorting algorithms. Let's first study insertion sort. Insertion sort is not fast, especially when the input array is big. But insertion sort is very efficient for small arrays. More efficient algorithms such as quick sort use insertion sort as a subroutine for sorting small subarrays. Let's first define the problem of sorting. The input is an array filled by n elements. Initially, the array is unordered. The goal is to sort the n elements in ascending order. After sorting, the n elements are in ascending order. Small elements are in the front, and big elements are in the back. Of course, you can sort arrays in descending order. The sorting algorithms can be applied in almost the same way. Let's study insertion sort. I will use an example to demonstrate insertion sort. The input of insertion sort is an array. This array has 10 elements. Initially, the array is unordered. Let's sort the 10 elements in ascending order. Now the first iteration begins. The first iteration works on the first two elements. I mark the first two elements using a red rectangle. Take the second element out of the array. Let the element 1 be the key. Let's insert the key 1 into the red rectangle. We need to find the position for inserting the key. We need to make sure that after the insertion, the elements in the red rectangle has ascending order. Compare the key 1 with the remaining element 8. 8 is greater than the key. So move 8 one step rightward to make a room for the key. Now, there is a vacant position to the left of 8. Insert the key 1 into the vacant position. We have finished the first iteration. After the first iteration, the first two elements are in ascending order. Let me recap what we have done so far. In each iteration, take the rightmost element out of the subarray, that is, the red rectangle. Let this element be the key. Then insert the key back to the subarray. To perform the insertion, all the elements greater than the key must be moved one step right to make a room. Then insert the key to the vacant position. This is why the algorithm is called insertion sort. Now the second iteration begins. The second iteration works on only the first three elements. Take the rightmost element, 4, out of the subarray. Let 4 be the key. Next, we insert the key into the subarray. Compare the key, 4, with the element 8. 8 is greater than the key. So move 8 one step rightward to make a room. Now, there is a vacant position to the left of 8. Compare the key 4 with the previous element 1. 1 is smaller than the key. We don't move the element 1. We found the position for inserting the key. Insert the key 4 into the vacant position. This is the end of the second iteration. After the second iteration, the first three elements are in ascending order. Now the third iteration begins. In the third iteration, we work on the first four elements. They are 1, 4, 8, and 9. More generally speaking, in the ith iteration, we work on the first i plus 1 elements. Take the rightmost element, 9, out of the subarray. Let 9 be the key. Then we look for the place for inserting the key. 
Compare the key nine with the element eight. Eight is smaller than the key, so we don't need to move eight. We know that after the second iteration, the first three elements are in ascending order. Since the element eight is smaller than the key, all the previous elements are smaller than the key as well. So we don't need to compare the key with the elements to the left of eight. We have found the position for placing the key. Insert the key into the vacant position. We have finished the third iteration. After the third iteration, the first four elements are in ascending order. More generally speaking, after the ith iteration, the first i plus one elements are in ascending order. Now the fourth iteration begins. The fourth iteration works on the first five elements. Take the rightmost element, zero, out of the subarray. Let zero be the key. Then we look for the position for inserting the key. Compare the key zero with the remaining elements of the subarray. We move from right to left. Compare the key with nine. Nine is greater than the key. Move nine one step rightward to make room. Then compare the key with eight. Eight is greater than the key. Move eight one step rightward. Compare the key with four. Four is also greater than the key. Move four one step right. Finally. Compare the key with one. One is also greater than the key. Move one a step right to make a room. We have found the position for placing the key. Insert the key into the vacant position. We have finished the fourth iteration. After the fourth iteration, the first five elements are in ascending order. Now the fifth iteration begins. We work on the first six elements. Take the rightmost element six out of the subarray. Let six be the key. Then we look for the place for inserting the key. We need to compare the key with the remaining elements in the subarray. You already know how to perform the comparisons, so I will not show the comparisons step by step. This is the right position for inserting the key six. Move the elements eight and nine a step rightward to make a room. Then put the key in the vacant room. We have finished the fifth iteration. After the fifth iteration, all the six elements are in ascending order. Now the sixth iteration begins. We work on the first seven elements. Take the rightmost element five out of the subarray. Let five be the key. We are going to find the right position for inserting the key by comparing the key with the remaining elements in the subarray. We find the right position for inserting the key. Move the elements six, eight, and nine a step right to make a room. Insert the key into the vacant position. We have finished the sixth iteration. After the sixth iteration, all the first seven elements are in ascending order. Then the seventh iteration, we work on the first eight elements. Move the rightmost element two out of the subarray. Let two be the key. By comparing the key with the remaining elements, we find the position for inserting the key. Move the elements bigger than the key a step rightward to make a room. Then insert the key into the vacant position. We have finished the seventh iteration. 
After the seventh iteration, the first eight elements are in ascending order. Then the eighth iteration. We work on the first nine elements. Take the rightmost element, 7, out of the subarray. Let 7 be the key. By comparing the key with the remaining elements, we find the position for inserting the key. Move the elements bigger than the key one step rightward. Then insert the key into the vacant position. We have finished the 8th iteration. After the 8th iteration, the first 9 elements are in ascending order. Finally, the 9th iteration. We work on all the 10 elements. Take the rightmost element, 3, out of the array. Let 3 be the key. By comparing the key with the remaining elements, we find the right position for inserting the key. Move the elements greater than the key a step rightward to make a room. Then insert the key into the vacant cell. This is the end of the ninth iteration, and also the end of the program. Now, all the 10 elements are in ascending order. We have fulfilled the task. Let's implement insertion sort using C language. This is the implementation of insertion sort. We want to arrange the input array in ascending order. N is the size of the array. Insertion sort has a nested loop. This is the outer loop. This is the inner loop. I'm going to explain them one by one. The outer loop lets i grow from 1 to a minus 1. i is the iteration. The number of iterations is n minus 1. This is the input array that we want to sort. In the ith iteration, the program works on the first i plus 1 elements. After the ith iteration, the first i plus 1 elements will be in ascending order. Let's look into the for loop. In the ith iteration, the ith element is the key. The key is the rightmost element in the subarray. This is the inner loop. It looks at the remaining elements in the subarray from right to left and compare each element with the key. The goal is to make the elements greater than the key one step rightward to make a room. The inner loop performs such operations. Big elements are moved one step rightward. When the inner loop ends, g plus 1 is the index of the empty position. Insert the key into the empty position. We have learned the algorithm. Now let's analyze its time complexity. First, the worst case time complexity. We have observed this fact. In the ith iteration, we work on only the first i plus 1 elements. In every iteration, the key is compared with the elements in the red rectangle. The elements greater than the key will be moved one step rightward. In the worst case, the ith iteration performs i comparisons and swaps. There are n elements, so totally n minus 1 iterations are needed. In the worst case, the number of comparisons and swaps is the sum of i from 1 to n minus 1. The sum is proportional to n square, thus the worst case time complexity is O n square. 
We have analyzed the worst case time complexity. Now let's analyze the best case time complexity. In the best case, the input array is already in ascending order. Each iteration compares the key with the other elements in the red rectangle. In this example, the key is 5. The key is firstly compared with the element 4. 4 is smaller than the key, 5. Since the key is greater than 4, the key must be greater than all the elements to the left of 4. So, no further comparison is needed. We can break the inner loop after this comparison. So the time complexity of this iteration is constant. We conclude that in the best case, each iteration has a mere constant time complexity. There are n-1 iterations. Each iteration has constant time complexity. So the overall time complexity is On. In the best case, the time complexity is linear. It's much better than the worst case. The worst case time complexity is square. The best case time complexity is linear. What about the average case? The average case means the input array has random order. The elements are randomly shuffled. Will the average time complexity be somewhere between square and linear? Unfortunately, the average case time complexity is on square, the same as the worst case. The analysis of the average case uses random variables and expectations. It's more involved, so I will not do the proof here. The take-home message is that the time complexity of insertion sort is in general on square. But insertion sort can be much faster if the input is close to ascending order. We have learned insertion sort. In the next lecture, we will study other sorting algorithms. Thank you for watching. The link to my slides can be found below the video.